is OJ over here from Player Essence and welcome to the PE Nintendo Switch news video that I have here for you guys today. We've got a lot of great information for you in addition to a rumor that is probably fake. Trust me, this is probably not true, especially the date that it comes on. But at the same time, I did want to go over it because there's some interesting things that I wanted to talk about. So let's go ahead and get right into this. So Lego City Undercover packaging suggests up to 13 gigabytes of the space required for the Nintendo Switch version of the game. So it has been discovered that on the packaging of Lego Switch Undercover for the Nintendo Switch, a note on the back advises that up to 13 gigabytes is required for the game download so as the initial size of the game is 7.1 gigabytes on the cartridge this could mean that additional amount is needed for the data however at this stage it's still unclear whether or not this is for lego city undercover internet connection that the packaging also mentions is required or if it's to facilitate for certain features in the game lego city undercover is due for release on the nintendo switch on april 4th in North America and April 7th in Europe. It's also coming to the PS4 and the Xbox One. So there's still a little bit of uncertainty and unclarity on this based on what they say here. I think we still need to wait and see. But even with that, it shows that they're kind of cheaping out on the cartridges. They're going with the eight gigabyte cartridge, it seems, and then the rest you're going to have to download on your internal memory. Now, we don't know whether this is to make the load times faster to enable certain features, like they said, for internet connection, downloadable content. Like, what are they doing with this extra data that they're having and only making it to where the cartridges is under eight gigabytes? But we still need to wait and see and find out the full story on there. If you go digital normally then there's nothing for you to worry about you're just going to download the game digitally like people normally do but if you are looking to get the game on cartridge so you can have basically no space picking up on your internal memory that's definitely an issue so some people are upset with that i'm not as big on lego city in the first place so i'm just kind of like eh, whatever i'll download it digitally if i have to or if i even want to get the game but from what i understand it is a 59.99 game across all platform so it is what it is if you're interested in it check it out see what's best for you or you can get it on a different platform it's really up to you what you want to do all right moving on to the next article here so nintendo has released a new firmware update for the nintendo switch but it doesn't necessarily add any new features at this point but of course with these stability updates usually they do them in order to add some stuff in the future of course just to make sure that everything runs well and there is one thing that i wanted to talk about when it comes to nintendo firmware updates we did have a few issues with the nintendo switch when it comes to the auto connecting of wi-fi and having an additional drain on the gpu resource so maybe they fixed that with this update we don't know we're gonna have to wait and see maybe what digital foundry has to say with fast R max or if we can get a developer that wants to talk about what actually has been changing when it comes to the stability update but according to nintendo's site here all it says is improvements included in version 2.1.0 general system stability improvements to enhance the user's experience so that could be the whole gpu drain thing so that doesn't happen with fast rmx so you have a more stable resolution so we'll have to wait and see uh, maybe when some tests come out and all that because this just launched yesterday at this point so yeah let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below all right and moving on to the next topic here we have a rumor about an april nintendo switch direct guys i do not think this is necessarily true just because of the date that it was posted on or as far as what the date they said that it was going to come april 1st obviously april fool's day but at the same time we still don't know you just never know what these posts it comes from 4chan so i do not believe this at all i do not believe this at all but some of the stuff in here is interesting and it seems like to me this person is taking some really high like educated guesses because a lot of this stuff is like yeah nintendo could probably do this nintendo direct or it could just be like a press release so let's go in and get into this first because there's some interesting stuff so According to this, this is going to be April 1st, 2017. We're going to have Paper Mario Thousand Year Door HD. It's going to be a remaster of the GameCube Classic for the Nintendo Switch. In addition to bringing back features fans loved about the original, some things are tweaked and balanced, like the backtracking in Twilight Town. The game is scheduled for release in October. And then we have Super Mario Maker for the Nintendo Switch. So a port of Super Mario Maker is coming to the Nintendo Switch. With the Wii U features intact, this includes Amiibo support, costume support, and uploading levels to Course World a couple new course features are introduced as well, like slopes. Breath of the Wild DLC is shown off, so the gameplay is shown for the Cave of Trials, which was announced back in February. The new feature in the map shows players where enemy camps are nearby. So that's going to be interesting because Nintendo didn't detail that, they just said a map feature. So that'd be interesting if that was actually it. Splatoon 2, a new trailer is shown detailing the game's story mode. Agent 3 must defend Inkopolis from the Octarians as they invade Inkopolis and try to steal back the great Zapfish. 
Bill also talks about the game's ranked mode, which includes the returning splat zones and tower control, along with a new mode. In addition, all three modes can be selected separately at any time and are not tied to the game's rotation like stages. The game will also be compatible with the Splatoon series of Amiibo. The Amiibo challenges from the first game are returning. All right, now moving on to the Virtual Console. The Virtual Console will be starting up pretty soon. NES and Super NES titles are planned to start being released in May. GameCube games are indeed coming to the Virtual Console. Certain games that require analog triggers will have the option to configure the shoulder buttons that indicate a light or full press. For example, pressing R will indicate a light press, pressing ZR will indicate a full press. Super Smash Bros. Melee will be available in early June, with Super Mario Sunshine and Mario Kart Double Dash coming in late June. Indie games. Bill passes it over to Damon Baker, who announces the release dates for some of the indie games described in the indie presentation back in February. Runner 3 will launch on October 12th. Theme World Dig 2 will launch on June 8th. Overcooked Special Edition will launch on May 18th. Stardew Valley will be released on July 13th. And Shakedown Hawaii will release on April 6th. Damon Baker then passes it back to Bill and he talks about the upcoming Nintendo 3DS game, which is Ever Oasis. The section starts with talking about Ever Oasis, which releases on June 8th. Next, we have Lady Layton, which is coming to the US and is planned for a 2018 release. And we have Fire Emblem Echoes. Details on the special edition of the game are given, as well as a deeper look into the game's world and what Alm and Celica Amiibo do. The Amiibo can allow you to summon certain characters from past Fire Emblem titles to add to your party. You can also scan previously released Amiibo of Fire Emblem characters and add them. Next, we have Arm. The Direct ends with a new trailer for Arms. It details the game's story mode and announces four new characters. The game releases on May 29th. There is nothing on Super Smash Bros. related to this Direct, not even the three Amiibo. Don't get your hopes up for that, it says. So this is a really interesting thing because all this stuff that's listed here can easily just be predicted. Someone can just say, yeah, this is what's going to happen around this time. And some of this stuff is just kind of out there. We've been wanting for a Paper Mario Thousand Year Door HD for a new Paper Mario series game, like in the same vein of what Intelligent Systems did. Because look, I understand that some of you guys like the color splash, like the sticker stars and all that, but those games are not very good in my opinion. So if Nintendo was to do this, that would definitely be good. Now, Nintendo did officially comment somewhat on this, saying that, hey, if you want like this type of game, like Paper Mario HD, Thousand Year Door, whatever, keep on asking for it. So maybe they listen. I think a Paper Mario Thousand Year Door HD would be amazing, and it would definitely be something that people would want. Super Mario Maker is, I think, a given at this point. Super Mario Maker was a huge success across the Wii U and the 3DS version, which has sold millions at this point. So I definitely think they're going to be prepping a Super Mario Maker for the Nintendo Switch. With the graphical style of that game, you don't necessarily need to have this whole new thing. You can just have the base package of what Super Mario Maker is, and then just add content in regularly. It could be like Splatoon. I don't think you need to have a Super Mario Maker, Super Mario Maker 2, Super Mario Maker 3. Just have the base game, add new content in, then you can repackage it later down the line, like three or four years, where it just has everything on there. I mean, there's so much stuff that you can do with that style of game, so I can definitely see Super Mario Maker. So with the Splatoon 2 stuff, yes, it does seem like this stuff could happen, but who knows? Like I said, this is probably not correct when it comes to all this stuff. This could just be educated guesses because none of this stuff is really out there or crazy or anything like that when it comes to virtual console things like that a lot of this stuff has been rumored well beforehand when it comes to time frames and when things are going to be coming out and who the indie guy is and all of that arms i mean there's just stuff here let's say four new characters nintendo did confirm that there will be more characters in the game than what has just been shown off. May 29th, I'm not so sure about that release date for ARMS because that is a Monday and Nintendo never releases games on Monday. If anything, it would be Friday, May 26th because Nintendo usually releases games on Friday. Nintendo Switch launch was on a Friday and even with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, that is also on a Friday. So I would expect that game to be released on a Friday, not May 29th, but May 26th. But hey, who knows? Once again, this is just a rumor. I don't really believe a lot of this stuff as far as how it's laid out here. I think that if Nintendo did do a direct or something like this, yes, it could go down like this, but this is just educated guesses. And I don't know about the date, April 1st. So we'll see what happens here. Obviously, you can believe it or not. I would probably say lean on the side of not believing it. But a lot of this stuff could definitely happen just based on educated guesses and rumors that we've already had well beforehand. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Go ahead and hit that like button if you did like it. Let me know you guys want more content like going forward in the future and subscribe to player essence for the latest news reviews discussions and more thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you ninjas for the next video peace